What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome. I am the Crypto Crow, and uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, narrative, and we're going to be talking about Cardano, some Cardano-based news, some crypto-related news, and I'm going to show you just how easy it is to purchase a narrative in the crypto space. And I think it's vitally important for you guys to understand this as you move forward in crypto uh, and, and you know continuing through the bear market into 2023 up to the halving of 2024 and how you start to see new narratives unfold around various crypto projects because I think that it should definitely impact your investment preferences long term and uh so we're going to dive into that um right now so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at some crypto news uh these investors are buying up cardano en masse what is their plan so we're going to take a quick look at what these folks are doing cardano has become one of the most bought assets by the top 2,000 whales on Binance Smart Chain in the past 24 hours, according to Whale Stats, a porter, portal that tracks the activities of major crypto investors across various networks. Just in Cardano, now on the top 10 purchase tokens among the 2,000 biggest whales in the last 24 hours. Now, top 2,000 um, whales, okay, that's cool. Um, but I'm also going to show you something. This is you today. Okay. Keep that in mind and remember this. Because when I read this, when I see stuff like this, I think somebody with money just bought a big load of Cardano. They're starting to average in. They want to start building a narrative. And they likely, I'm assuming, maybe not, I don't know, Gamza, I, I don't know who this gentleman is, and I could be wrong, but he could have bought this ad, it, it bought this article, okay? And I'm gonna to explain to you how it's done it, it, towards the end of this video. Now, um, that's not to say that this is necessarily a bad thing. It could all be based on facts. It could all be based on good information and so forth, but there's obviously a narrative brewing because Cardano doesn't buy stuff like this. To my knowledge, they don't spend much money in advertising, which is a big part of why you see a lot of big FOMO narratives being built around projects like Solana and other projects in the past, and I'm sure will continue in the future as these venture capitalists with big stakes in Solana token try to make an effort to pump that token back up as we head towards a bull market later on to try and get some of that money back. And they're going to do that most likely with the methods I'm about to show you in this video. Now, the top 100 whales on Binance Smart Chain currently hold 21.4 million ADA, equivalent to $6.87 million. The Cardano's token share of the total portfolio of this investor group is 0.86%. In total, there are 500,768 Cardano holding addresses on the BSC network. So, Keep that stuff in mind as we move forward. Cardano founder Charles Hoskinson has taken aim at Gemini for refusing to list Cardano. It really makes no sense why you have one of the top 10 cryptocurrencies in the in the in the crypto space, and we still see a number of exchanges that will not list it. Okay. And and the idea of this is actually quite interesting we'll just say that in a recent tweet cardano founder charles hoskinson took at gemini a popular crypto ex currency exchange founded by the winklevoss twins for refusing to add the ada cryptocurrency and this has been an ongoing thing for a long time now i mean charles and in, in his uh contempt for the winklevoss twins and their lack of interest i guess for whatever reason and in, enlisting in ada on their exchange it's not that Cardano needs it. It just doesn't make sense to anyone until maybe now. Hoskinson argues that not listing ADA is pretty tightly correlated with bankruptcy risk. On Saturday, the Financial Times reported that Gemini was attempting to recover as much as $900 million from troubled crypto lender Genesis. Genesis is currently facing potential bankruptcy bankruptcy after its lending arm unexpectedly halted withdrawals on November 16th. FTX, the second largest cryptocurrency exchange that went bankrupt last month, didn't have any spot ADA pair. Isn't this interesting? 
As reported by you today, founder Sam Bankman Fried tweeted that adding the token was on the exchange's roadmap just a few weeks prior to its collapse. Notably, ADA was the only major cryptocurrency without a spot listing on FTX. Now, Cardano enthusiasts have taken Gemini to task for refusing to add support for ADA despite listing the native tokens of other popular proof-of-stake protocols. In 2020, Gemini also feuded with the XRP community after refusing to list the popular cryptocurrency. However, it then felt vindicated after Ripple got sued by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. That's actually pretty telling. Uh, and, and there's a lot associated with these companies and their... And we see this kind of play out all over the place, don't we? What's funny is, is you have one of the top 10 cryptocurrencies with a substantial total tokens available in, in circulating supply, vastly decentralized, if not one of the top, I don't know, five, if, if at worst case, one of the top five most, top five most decentralized uh, cryptocurrencies on the crypto market, in the crypto market, and yet, we see so much lack of support for Cardano through the years. And we see an abundance of support for a lot of what we in the tech field that we, we actually read and research beyond the narratives, we see as much lesser products, much lesser blockchains. And we see more centralized blockchains typically in favor of the media, venture capitalists, so forth and so on. Do you see where I'm going with this? So if you're talking about a cryptocurrency project that is ultimately being developed, designed, built, and 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 pushed out as a means of potentially com combating with uh, any maybe global financial agenda that's ultimately being forced down our throats, now we're starting to see all of the collusion associated with a lot of these major uh, centralized cryptocurrency exchanges. Not only that, but the collusion between them, media in the cryptocurrency space, and now due to FTX and what has happened there, a lot of the political leanings, the political uh, relationships and so forth. And what you don't see is Cardano being a part of any of it. That's because of its true decentralized nature, uh, nature okay? And, and this is one of the things that caught my attention all the way back in December of 2017 when I first discovered Cardano and started doing videos about it against the grain because back then, everyone was dumping all over Cardano, calling it every name in the book, ghostware, a, a ghost chain, vaporware, uh, a scam, a Ponzi, all kinds of stuff. And now we're seeing this slower turtle ultimately becoming the leader of the cryptocurrency decentralized space. And I think that's definitely gonna be continuing, but I, I, I am curious to see what narratives start to sprout up over some of its competitors that have had some really difficult times of late. So we'll have to see how that comes about. Former SEC official slams Tether for running a Ponzi scheme. Labels firm as a house of cards. And this has been an ongoing narrative for quite some time as it relates to USD Tether. Uh, but it still exists and it's still used widely. And, um, you know, former, former SEC enforcement official John Reed has questioned the implication of the alleged lack of transparency by USDT stablecoin provider Tether. According to Reed, who worked with the SEC for almost two decades, Tether's failure to disclose key information about its balance sheet might be a sign the firm is operating as a house of cards. But they have been. They've been, they've been operating this way forever. Uh, and I know that at one point they were doing a, a kind of an audit, and I don't think that audit concluded the way everybody was expecting it to. And I, and I definitely think there's something maybe a little wonky associated with USD Tether, but this is also why Charles uh, Hoskinson of Cardano believes that a true algorithmic stable token on a decentralized blockchain could be the answer to what a lot of these other so-called, so you know, backed stable tokens are, uh, because we're finding that a lot of these quote-unquote backed stable tokens aren't actually backed by as much as they claim. 
The former SEC official made the remarks in response to a December 2nd CNBC interview where Tether co-founder Reeve Collins was tasked to explain the company's lack of full disclosure, especially in the wake of the FTX cryptocurrency exchange collapse. Based on Collins' response, Reed suggested that the company was running a Ponzi scheme. Wow, tell us Tether is running a Ponzi scheme without telling us that Tether is running a Ponzi scheme. Just listen to his answers. In my honest opinion, as former SEC enforcement official of 18 years, the evasion, deflection, lack of responsiveness makes me believe Tether is a house of cards. John Reed Stark on Twitter. It very well could be, but we're not going to find out likely for a while. Cardano reigns as the most developed crypto asset as ADA leaps forward. This is huge. And for those of you that don't understand what this means, you know, when I when I talk about bear market, bull market, bear market is the time to build. Um, you know, when I'm looking at a cryptocurrency project and, I, and I'm considering putting money into it, I want to know that it can survive a bear market and come out smelling like a bed of roses at the end as we head into the new halving and the new bull market cycle and so forth. Very few projects are able to actually accomplish this, which is what makes the rarity of it such a meaningful uh, metric for speculation. And this goes into Cardano's development cycles and ultimately how it's beating the pants off of everything else out there in the crypto space. Um, for a ghost chain, laughably, uh, it, it, it seems to be doing pretty well uh, on the development front. Cardano has emerged as the blockchain network with the most robust development activity in the last 30 days, according to data from Santiment. Santiment's actually a pretty solid platform I use myself for uh, gauging social metrics and other details, as well as Masari.io. It's definitely proven to be pretty useful, but I've noticed Masari doesn't list a lot of the tokens I have an interest in. Per data from the on-chain metrics, uh, on-chain on -chain analytics platform, the Cardano blockchain's GitHub code repository recorded 18% more developer activity than any other blockchain after filtering out routine updates. The repository clinched over 500,000 significant development updates in the last... 30 days. How do you do 500,000 significant development updates over a 30 day period with a tiny or non existent team? For all of the Cardano naysayers and futters out there who are likely paid for spreading BS narratives across the cyberspace, Cardano is head and shoulders above all other crypto assets on development activity. Our GitHub tracking data filters out routine updates like Slack updates. Polkadot clocked in, a se clocked in second in the ranking with over 486,000 updates to its repository. Kasuma, Cosmos, Ethereum, Internet, Computer, Status, Decentraland, Filecoin, and Vega Protocol rounded off the rest of the top 10 networks by GitHub. I've talked about Filecoin in a video that most ignored, and, uh, and I published that on my secondary channel that I don't admittedly do a whole lot on right now. Um, but it's kind of one of those things where if you watch this channel and you think, hey, Crow says some stuff sometimes that might get him banned, uh, I'm going to follow his backup channel that's using a completely different everything uh, so that, you know, I'm always available and I'm always, you know, uh, ready for whatever his next video might be. So um, definitely go. It's linked in this channel. So, it you know, it's Crow's Nest. So go follow me there. Now. This is what I'm going to show you, the moment you might be waiting for. Maybe you don't care at all. I don't really know, but I'm going to tell you this anyway, because I think it's going to play a pretty significant role in the future of blockchain. This is Coinzilla, not to be confused with CoffeeZilla, the, the gentleman who uh, puts a lot of time. I don't know how this guy, I don't know how CoffeeZilla digs up what he digs up about stuff. I used to be kind of skeptical of him and his practices, and I've grown to be basically a huge fan of this guy, and he's just blowing the hell up all over the internet, so good for him. He looks so young, though. I, I have to admit, I feel like... He looks so young. He's got to be, I'm guessing, is he in his 30s? I don't know. Um, but, I mean, the kid doesn't age because he's looked pretty much the same uh, for as long as I've been in crypto. So, I don't know. Maybe he's a vampire. I, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I'm joking, obviously. But, anyway, um, this is Coinzilla Marketplace. And, basically, what this platform is, is it's a platform that enables anyone, really, 
to go buy advertising in the form of CPM batter, banner ads at a certain, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll bid so much money for every thousand views, that sort of thing, uh, which we all know banner ads are often just ignored entirely anymore. Uh, or you can buy press release distribution on these websites, sponsored articles or organic articles. So if we go and we click organic articles, we're just gonna leave the price range from zero to $48,000 and we're gonna see what comes up. So um, I wonder if there's a way, let's see, trending price highest first. Let's see who are the most expensive, okay. Um, well, this doesn't seem uh, very accurate. So organic article on coin codex, it's 1,680 pounds. So this is like uh, UK money. And, and I've, I've been going through a lot of this because ultimately with SoBlocks, my social media platform, this is ultimately the only way to promote something in crypto, okay? So it's a double-edged sword in the sense that it's really about the only methodology, it's only outlet, vehicle, whatever available to be able to promote a cryptocurrency-based project. That's cool, that's good. My problem though, is when more nefarious projects or venture capital groups or people use these kinds of tools to create a potentially false narrative and attack other projects to try and boost their own popularity. Because what we see, any narrative that we see today, what happens? Well, you see those who spend the money typically get the most favorable outcomes for with the media, right? So it's the same way, um, you know, people like to attack crypto YouTubers for doing paid segments, which to some degree is rightfully so, because there are a lot of YouTubers out there still, especially those outside of the US who do not disclose anything, they pump all kinds of projects or these trashy YouTubers that use their popularity to promote a project just to sell it onto their, you know, dump it on their heads, they get it really cheap, they do some videos and then they pump the value and then they dump it on their fans and everyone else, disgusting, disgusting tactics. And, and it's like some of them seem to think that's an okay thing because they admit that they do it or something. It's still disgusting. Um, and there's just so much terrible activity associated with paid content across the board. And it is used often for more nefarious means. Um, and, and so, and the thing of it is, is we see what happens to newcomers to anything? What happens to the general public when it comes to anything, whether it's political or medical or whatever? Whoever has the money can typically buy the narrative they want because the media, especially nowadays, are ultimately a bunch of paid puppets. I mean, ultimately the media is basically there to say, hey, we're, we've got a platform that we've been building from search engine optimization and regular content publications, building this, this volume of traffic from the organic searches of search engines. And since we've done this work, you can pay us to put your ad out there and we can make your ad look like an organic article or a sponsored article or whatever you want, video advertising, social media posts, you name it, we've got an opportunity for you. And the thing of it is, is that so many projects, venture capital groups, uh, even just speculative investors who have extra money, they go in and they buy bags of whatever crypto and they'll come here, they'll punch up an article, this is going to the moon, and then it gets shared. And oftentimes, people like myself will cover these uh, articles and will say, oh, look at this article, caught my eye. But we never really know 100% which articles are bought and paid for or a general opinion of somebody that works for that platform. The other side to this too is, Forbes, uh, you know, a lot of the biggest magazines and online publications out there have the exact same thing. They do the exact same thing and the way that works, and I know this because I used to work in SEO. And a lot of people who are trying to launch websites and they're trying to build their authority on, for their website, they will go and they will buy an article on Forbes or Bloomberg or something to that effect to get a link back or a backlink. That backlink will have an authoritative uh, number associated with it that's ultimately sharing power with the website or the article that they're, they're, they're 
paying for, right? So let's say I, I own Bloomberg and my page authority is an 84 or something. That basically means that anything I link to from this website must be really good because this website's authority is so prominent that they wouldn't link to garbage. And so that quote unquote link juice gets sent back to whatever article. Now, there are other different ways of doing that, whether it's a no follow link, a do follow link or whatever. And it tells the spiders, this is, this is why we're linking to it. This is the 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 suggested power of this link and what it means to this website that sort of thing so but you can do that i can buy an article right now and just basically talk about how i'm the best coolest most handsome youtuber in the crypto cybersphere and i can throw it up on forbes in seven days for a couple grand maybe it's five grand i don't even remember and then people will read that and they'll be like holy cow this guy's handsome this guy's amazing he's the best youtuber i should go follow him I'm just creating my own narrative and I'm paying for that narrative. But the people that don't know any better, they, they don't know that I'm just some big ogre with graying hair sitting on YouTube uh, talking about crypto. So unless you know better, you're not gonna know anything other than what this article tells you about me or tells you about my project. And this, what we see often is, and this goes across the board, this isn't just crypto, this is any narrative. Okay, can very easily be bought and paid for nowadays. And so when we go to the media and we look for, we look to media to basically get a better understanding of something or to find out about something, there's so much slant and bias and just garbage and noise associated with whatever that story may be. And more often than not, it's paid for by advertisers. And when something is paid for by an advertiser, there's generally more interest in that platform or that medium to project a more positive interest or positive image to that platform to continue moving up their revenue or their valuation or whatever that brings them more business. And it's a like, you, you, you know, you watch my back, I watch your back kind of relationship that can establish over time and are generally established in even much stronger ways through ad agencies that have already established these relationships. And then these ad agencies can go to these companies and say, my, my client, has you know ten million dollars to spend over the next uh, two quarters, and we're, we want to you know we want a bunch of these, we want a bunch of these, almost like a shopping cart. We want to spread it out over time. You know maybe we need some writer support, but this is the overall objective. And they put together these whole campaigns, these plans to create a narrative specifically to indoctrinate or to educate or to sell you on whatever it is they're paying for. So. <clears throat> I just wanted to share that with you because I think that there's a lot to be said about centralized and decentralized projects in the cryptocurrency space. Because what you see is the more centralized projects for whatever reason seem to come up in the news, articles all over the crypto sphere much more frequently and with a much more positive narrative associated with them than do decentralized platforms, cryptocurrencies and blockchain. Chains. Why? Because generally, the more decentralized applications in the crypto space aren't pumping millions of dollars into these kinds of marketing efforts. I have never received a single penny from anything I've ever done or said about Cardano since the very first video in December of 2017. And I'm sure I never will. But the point is, the decentralized applications gen generally are known to move forward through their work, their development, their milestones, their white papers, their team, and basically all of the relevant metrics associated with the decentralized crypto project. And they continue to move forward on their own merits, not necessarily a narrative they're purchasing from outlets that will perpetuate it. So that is something that you should always be keeping in mind from this day forward as you continue to move through your journey in the cryptocurrency space. And until next time, guys, crow your coins and I'll see you again very soon.